In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look here at numerous snowfall opportunities, including one in just a few days. This does look like a minor to moderate snow threat, but nevertheless, a, a threat a little further south than we're used to. We're going to talk about that, as well as numerous others coming up as we just continue to look to be in a cold pattern. And really today, the theme is the models have kind of backed off on the warm up happening around the midway point of the month. We'll talk about that later on. Let's just go ahead and dive into the model guidance, I guess. We'll take a look here at the European model first things first. And as we look towards tomorrow afternoon, there's not a lot happening right now, hence why we're not even looking at the current conditions. But tomorrow afternoon, we're going to see everything kind of shaking up, shaping up. And I don't really know why my pen is so little, so let's just fix that. There we go. Well, it still seems a little smaller than we're used to here. Here, how about this one? Perfect. There we go. So we get this northern jet pulling in the cold air, the southern jet really infusing the moisture into the whole pattern. And we're going to be watching some interesting areas for potential snowfall. Uh, this is the more southern route. There is a chance, according to some models, that this does pull up a little bit more into the mid-Atlantic and northeast. So we'll consider both options today. We're going to kind of just go over it. Now, before we watch this all shape up, join our Discord server. Uh, we have the QR code on screen, the description, pinned comment down below with some links. It's a very active community. We've been talking about this system. We do have a contest for this system where you pick the town that you expect to get the most snowfall. And we even announced today that we're going to be doing a winter long contest where every single time we do one of these individual storm contests, we're going to be tallying up your totals. And at the end of the winter, I don't know what the prizes are going to be yet, but they're going to be much larger than the typical contest. Um, and... It's really about bragging rights, you know, get, get your predictions in there. It's very, very fun. Pick the towns and we're going to be doing it all winter long. And I do plan on doing a severe weather one for 2026 as well. A whole year long severe weather contest as well. So join in on the fun. It's a great weather community on Discord. We have 750 members now. It's up like 500 so far from November. So growing crazy fast. Be a part of it. I'm very active in there as well. And I'd love to talk with you guys. So let's keep talking about this storm though. And as we kind of just progress into the overnight on the European model, we see mostly Northern Tennessee, Southern Kentucky, Virginia, Southern West Virginia, and Northern North Carolina beginning to get snowfall as soon as 4 AM here on Friday, December 5th. As we keep progressing with this, we see the light, the snow stays light to moderate. It's not a heavy hitting massive snow system or anything, but it is just a minor to moderate snow system for these further south areas. If this was the Midwest or the far Northeast, this wouldn't even be notable, but based on the location, this is worth mentioning for sure. And we can see as we reach towards 10 a.m. on Friday, we do see some snowfall, even for my neck of the woods, Southeastern Virginia, possibly in the mix here, uh, Northern North Carolina, uh, also a lot of Central Virginia seeing some light to moderate snowfall that's likely sticking for those areas and then still Southern West Virginia. Those are kind of the key areas here and the European model is going to be one of the further north models that does pull up a little bit up the coast and we start to see snowfall for DC, Maryland, Delaware, Southern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, even Southern Jersey. So a lot of the areas that missed out on our previous snow systems might be getting a little bit of one here. And again, this is just a few days from now. This isn't like the long or even medium range at this point. And the low does develop. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, if we could get a little bit of a Western trend with this thing, all of a sudden you'd be looking at a more moderate snow system for some of these areas. It's just a little bit too far suppressed. And when we look at the jet stream, here's the real issue. It's really flat. Uh, it's not pulling up the coast at all, so it would take a lot to pull this thing any further west or north, but it is possible still. Uh, if that's going to happen, I would say it's most likely to show up on the models within the next 24 hours, so we'll see what happens by tomorrow. Uh, but the good news is, for those of you that didn't get snowfall with that one, we have one uh, basically forming for the weekend and into the early portion, like Monday, Tuesday of the week after. So it's not going to take long for us to get into our next threat. And when we're looking at Saturday afternoon on the 6th here, we can see the Cascades, Rockies, uh, even up here into Western Canada, we have some moderate to heavy snowfall in these areas. We do have a clipper system. The low is located for Nebraska and Kansas, and we do have some snowfall to the north of that one as well. Keep in mind, we're descending with the jet stream into the east still by this point, so that's a pretty critical factor here. And we do see some upper Midwest snowfall, some pretty heavy upper Midwest snowfall for the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio. 
And what we see happening on this one is we have this piece of energy up here, and we also have a southern piece of energy where that southern stream is moving in, but we can tell there's a little bit of separation between that northern jet and southern jet right here, and this is still 105 hours out, Sunday the 7th. There is time for things to come together a little bit more. Obviously, even this scenario does result in a snow system for some of these areas, but it could be even bigger. Uh, it obviously could be smaller as well, but I'm just trying to give you guys kind of the, the possibility for the worst case scenario as well here, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're tracking moving forward for this setup. As we keep going towards Monday, what we see is that this low is just too far to the south compared to where the cold air is, which is up here. Uh, and we don't really get a connection here, but stay tuned. We are going to look at the GFS model where we do see this one connect. So you'll get to see kind of what that scenario would look like in just a moment. As we reach towards Monday, it's pretty clear we're in a very positive PNA uh, pattern with warmer air out west. All of that Arctic air pouring into the east still by the 8th here. So this is a pretty extended period of cold air that we're dealing with. And under the radar, uh, I'm not going to talk about it here we probably will talk about it in the discord server and maybe in future videos but we are seeing a couple of things happening that i wanted to make you aware of the mjo which is another teleconnection uh that one is becoming extremely favorable as we're moving into phase eight for those of you that know a lot about that if you don't don't worry it basically just means good opportunities for continued cold and snowfall opportunities essentially is the, the direction that that mjo is heading into and that's a pretty big one Another thing is we talked earlier in November, like mid-November, about a sudden stratospheric warming event that causes polar vortex to basically split up and head further south. And that's what we're reaping the rewards of right now. There's a good one or two week lag time for that. We are seeing the models start to suggest that we're about to see another status, uh, stratospheric warming event. Uh, and if that does occur, all of a sudden, it's game on for late December into mid-January. Again, we would be basically just doing round two. And it does look like we're shaping up to see something like that, which is just continuing to show promising signs for the short, medium, and long range here for cold and snow lovers. I just wanted to kind of update you guys on all of that stuff. Again, we'll deep dive more into that in the Discord server. Looking at Tuesday here on the 9th, we do see another little clipper system, very quick moving, that does move through the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley here, still ridge in the west, trough in the east here. That one does eventually bring some snowfall to the mid-Atlantic and northeast, uh, mostly light, maybe some areas moderate. We do see the next clipper system already shaping up, and we've talked about this before, but clipper systems, the main theme is a lot of them, and then they're quick moving and lighter snowfall amounts. But when you see one, two, three, four, five of them, like back to back to back, it does kind of add up. And also they tend to hit areas that are much colder. So areas where the snow doesn't melt as much. So it does kind of stack on top of each other sometimes. And we're seeing another one already developing by uh, the ninth, 10th time frame. We see that one move down into the Midwest and Great Lakes. And then impact the Northeast is maybe a moderate to heavy snow system. Time will tell on that one. We see uh, kind of recycling of the cold air warm in the west trough in the east this is the 12th this is friday so if you watched yesterday's video this model did not look like this for the 12th just yesterday it looked very cold in the west and warm in the east but we've seen this model really back away from that ideology and kind of reinforce the idea that we're going to see continued cold at least for a while longer in the east midwest great lakes seeing another clipper system moving through for the 13th here on saturday we do see that move into the mid-Atlantic and northeast with some light to moderate snowfall for like the third time here. As we keep going, we stay cold in the east, warm in the west, pretty much through the entire model run. We do get a little neutral with it at the very, very end, which is the 18th here. So very, very far out. Take it with a grain of salt. But the jet stream does become a lot flatter where we can see it's mostly flat west to east. A little bit of a snow system for the mid-Atlantic and northeast here. And if we're in a flat jet stream for this time of year, typically especially considering the amount of Arctic air that we have over North America, it's not necessarily going to mean it's a warmer time period at all. It's mostly going to actually be colder for these northern areas, and that's why we're getting mid-Atlantic and northeast snowfall, despite there being no trough in the east. Now, the GFS, again, is going to be a little bit different, so let's watch it play out. We get snowstorm number one, which is further south. We see more of Western North Carolina and southwestern Virginia getting snowfall initially for 4 a.m. on Friday here. And then we see more of North 
uh, northern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia even getting moderate snowfall here by 10 a.m. Uh, and then we see this one kind of stay snowfall for those southern areas, not really pulling up the coast. So really for northern Virginia, D.C., Maryland, Delaware, southern Pennsylvania, southern New Jersey, you end up with pretty much nothing in this scenario. And we're talking about a system that's only like two days away. So it's pretty crazy that it's either going to be a few inches of snowfall or literally nothing for some of these areas. And we're so, so close to the system. So stay tuned for updates on this one. I think this is, I, I put it in the Discord server, but I really feel like this is a, a boom or bust scenario for a lot of people where it's either going to surprise a lot of people or it's going to be like literally nothing. Um, and it's going to be a really sketchy one to track. So uh, don't get your hopes too far up. This one has, is subject to change a bit just because it's been so finicky on the models, but it is exciting to track. Then again, for Sunday here on the 7th and into Monday the 8th, look at this. We end up with another snow system uh, for similar areas where the European model had the low kind of at the same spot. It just didn't have quite as much cold air in the mid-Atlantic. But in this one, we get the cold air, we get the storm, and this actually leads to another snow system. Really pulling far south here. Take it with a grain of salt for South Carolina and North Carolina by Monday afternoon on the 4th. It would have to be an incredibly cold day on Monday for the high temperatures to be cold enough for snowfall in these very far south locations. Time will tell, of course. I think our best, 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 best chance for snowfall on the 8th is if the whole storm is further northward and we see more of the mid-Atlantic included. But, you know, nothing really surprises me these days with the weather, so... We have to consider it as a possibility. Um, we kind of keep the cold in the east. Clipper system number one. Clipper system number two there. Again, more of a heavy hitter for the mid-Atlantic and northeast for a clipper system at least. Then we do warm up here on this GFS model for the 13th, 14th. And then we see some colder air moving back in. But look at this. We still get this southern stream and fusing and this northern jet bringing some stronger systems and we end up getting back into somewhat of a northern plains upper midwest and great lakes snowfall pattern we get a massive one here towards the end of this model run for the plains midwest and great lakes uh, and then we do get the cold returned to the east for the 17th 18th 19th so again there is some differences here the gfs model has a little bit of a break in the cold and does warm us up for a few days the european model says hey it is not going to end <laughs> through through uh, past the midway point of the month, it's literally not going to end. The GFS model, again, takes a bit of a break, but both are very active with snow systems. There's going to be multiple things to track, so uh, definitely looking optimistic for cold and snow lovers all over the place. Total precipitation, the southern jet, believe it or not, with all the snow we're seeing, is very far supp suppressed to the south. We do see some activity moving across the northern portions of the United States, some clipper systems as well, too. This is your general storm track that we're seeing a lot of. So some northern stream activity, a lot of southern stream activity. It's going to depend a lot on how much of this we see coming together or not, as we've kind of talked about throughout the video. Now your anomalies here, we do see above average for the northwest, below average in the southwest, below average for the south central, below average for a lot of the east here. Again, despite having probably above average snowfall chances, we're not really getting any huge rainstorms in between it at all. So we're not getting those big soaking rainfall events. We're not getting huge snowstorms either. you got to remember, most snowfall is coming at a 10 to 1 ratio. So 1 inch of liquid precipitation is equaling 10 inches of snowfall. During this 15-day period, you probably average seeing more than an inch of precipitation. So if it was coming all in the form of snowfall, you would maybe need to get 20 inches of snowfall to meet your average precipitation. In a cold pattern like this, it is possible, but we're just not seeing that level of snowfall here. But I would say the snowfall chance is above average. Just the overall precipitation, the overall moisture is not meeting that average standard for a lot of these areas. And that's kind of why it's kind of weird. We're getting a lot of snow in a below average precipitation pattern. We do see that some of the lower Cascades in Sierra Nevadas are below average snowfall on this European model. But the northern Cascades into the Rockies look near average to even a little bit above average maybe in these northern areas. For the northern plains, Midwest, Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, this is all looking really good, really active, especially these further south locations. A lot of years, these areas don't even see a snowfall threat until we move into late December or January. So this is all kind of a bonus compared to what we're used to. Um, I've seen a lot of people that were like disappointed by yesterday's snowstorm or maybe this one that's upcoming is missing them But it's like guys, it's it's December 3rd right now You know what I mean? Like a lot of very active winters. We do not even see snowfall yet at all 
or even within the next two, three weeks. So everybody's got to pump the brakes a little bit. This is all a bonus compared to what is even standard. Um, and I'm just here for it, man. This is really exciting stuff. Lots of active lake effect snowfall as well in here. So high, high totals for a lot of these eastern areas. The GFS model is a little further south with this snow snowfalls you can see there's a little bit more separation where the mid-atlantic just kind of gets missed out entirely and i would hate this for you guys in the heart of the mid-atlantic because last winter was very similar over and over and over again these deep south areas saw a lot of snowfall and the interior northeast saw a lot of snowfall but you guys got kind of sandwiched in in here where you were missing out on both scenarios it was either too far south of you in snowfall or that rain snow line was above you and there was no real in between i'm hoping this winter is different now, for the temperatures, again, the European model, Arctic blast number one coming to an end. Arctic blast number two comes in with a vengeance for later this week, the fourth, fifth, sixth, and then Arctic blast number three moves in. is even more intense than the two before it for the eighth, ninth, tenth, and then we get a fifth one here, or fourth or fifth, then the fifth or sixth, and then maybe another one towards the end. So numerous just flexes of this huge trough that's bringing arctic air with it over and over and over again with very little to no breaks in between with warmer air it looks a little milder here towards the end of the model run uh, it's still pretty chilly and really it's 360 hours out so you got to take this with a grain of salt anyway gfs model again we're going to see the numerous arctic blasts here upcoming over the coming week or two but once we reach the 12th we see that warmer air shift in uh, in the cold shifts towards the west. But look at the end of the model run. We do return to a warm in the west, cold in the east pattern relatively quickly in under a week. So again, it starts mostly for the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, and then maybe part of the 17th and we're back to the colder air as a whole. Um, so both of these looking more optimistic than yesterday, in my opinion, for continued cold temperatures. And again, Things that are happening that go beyond even what these model models are showing. Things for after the 15th, after the 20th, like the sudden stratospheric warming in the MJO. All of those things are lining up to give us some confidence in the medium to long range that we will see more cold than warmth overall in most of the central and eastern United States. And with that will likely come a lot of snowfall opportunities. So very optimistic today, guys, for all of you cold and snow lovers. Uh, here's the 7th through the 17th on the European Ensemble model. Just to give you some bigger picture guidance, uh, these Ensemble models, which are really taking 20 to 30 members, so slightly different uh, models from each other, it's taking the mean average of all of them and giving us that result. And what we're seeing on screen here is that the majority here do agree, the vast majority, on warmer in the West, colder in the East, continuing for the 7th through 17th time frame overall. And the GFS Ensemble model, which works the same way, is very, very similar for the 9th through the 19th in this instance. So, again, everything looks super good, guys. With all that stuff being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.